Welcome to FCF Tucson, and thank you for visiting our broadcasts. Before we get into this message, we want to let you know that if you have any need for prayer or victories you'd like to share, you can let us know through the links in the video description below. And if you've been blessed by these teachings and would like to help us to reach others, you can securely give by visiting our website or clicking on the link again in the video description below. And lastly, please consider helping us to get this message out by sharing it or sharing our page with your friends and family. It is such an honor for us when you do. Thank you. And now, today's message. But uh, cel- the first thing we, we emphasize as part of our, our MO, that's our modus operandi, in case you don't know. I guess in, in modern terms, I started calling it our operating system. Right? <laughs> and the Lord told us to open a fountain of His healing, fo- healing power, but the question is, okay, what is we open the door, but now how do we do the healing part? Because, you know, He didn't say go and heal people. He said, open a fountain. I'm not the fountain. You're not the fountain. But we're supposed to open the fountain. The fountain comes from Him. Amen? Yes. Amen. It flows through us, but it comes from Him. It's not my power. It's His power. It's His healing. He's the source of it all. Amen? So how do we keep that thing open once we open the front door and put the sign out? Now what? And our modus operandi for that is simply this. We want to be sure that we take time to celebrate the goodness of God. Amen. And then we want to prepare willing people to be fountains, to be able to serve in the power of God and bring His goodness to people. And then thirdly, we want to repair people who are broken, whether it's physically broken, emotionally broken, spiritually broken, whatever their condition is, we want to provide opportunities for them to tap in to the healing power that God provides. Amen. So we call it CPR. Celebrate, prepare, repair. Uh, We resuscitate folks. The celebrate part, believe it or not, is hard to get people to buy into. They don't mind singing, but when you start talking about God's good all the time, you really get people to fight you over it. Either that or they say that that he's good when he kills babies. Well, first of all, he ain't killing no babies. And then B, that's not good. You have to be it. You have to be really, anyway. Psalm 34, 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in Him. Taste and see. What's that mean? Try it, you'll like it. Amen. Try it, you'll like it. I have no problem telling people, if you will just make some attempt to open your heart to God, you will be shocked to find how wonderful He is. Amen. Amen. In James chapter 1, the 16th verse, uh, James said, Don't be deceived, my beloved brethren. That means that what? Beloved brethren can be deceived. And then he said, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Every good gift and perfect gift comes from where? From the Father of lights. And He don't change, as the old song says. God is God and He don't ever change. Amen. Amen. He's good all the time. So he said, don't be deceived, my beloved brethren. It's good gifts and perfect gifts that come down from the Father. So if you think something came from the Father and it ain't a good gift or a perfect gift, you got the wrong source for that. Deception begins just like it did in the Garden of Eden. Uh, Number one, he said, Eve, uh, did God really say don't eat that apple? He said, you know, God's just trying to hold out on you. He's trying to keep you from eating that apple because then you'd be wise like him. What's he doing? He's implying that God's holding out on you. He don't want you to have good stuff. No, actually, he said, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives all men liberally. (laughs) He's wanting to give you wisdom. He wishes you'd take his wisdom because you're making such a mess. (laughs) Amen. But the devil comes to us and convinces us that God has somehow held out on us, ripped us off, Come on, left us in the lurch or is trying to teach us by giving us a headache. Come on. So, uh, the primary function of Christians is to worship God and we call that celebrating the goodness of God. In the festal gathering, uh, Adam Clark, an old time, uh, I guess was it the, no, maybe the 1800s? He was a Methodist commentator. He said that a festal gathering was an assembly collective of festive occasions. That's what church is supposed to be. 
an assembly collected on festive occasions. The uh, New Living Translation called it a joyful gathering, but the contemporary English version says, come to celebrate. I like that. Come to celebrate. Amen. Hebrews 13, 15, he said, Therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Now the prepare and repair part of it, uh, I got years ago as I was studying Ephesians chapter 4, the 11th and the 12th verse, where he said the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher have been given by God to the church in order to equip the saints or to perfect the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, in the King James, it says perfect the saints. If my job is to make people perfect, I have been one miserable failure. I can tell you that right now. So, including myself, I'm, you know, come on. Uh, but the word perfect there in some of the more modern translations, he uses uh, prepare, equip, equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Uh, he uses a Greek word, katartizo. And uh, I know you want to know that. But uh, it means, indeed, I, I think I wrote down my, my new favorite definition from uh, Spiros Zodiates, complete biblical uh, Bible, a complete word Bible, says, the fundamental meaning is to put a thing in its appropriate condition. I kind of like that. To establish, set up, equip, arrange, prepare, or mend. Amen. Prepare or mend. Arrange, prepare, or mend. The function of the fivefold ministry is to arrange, prepare, and mend the saints so that they can do works of, I like the, the translation, works of service in order for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. We come to church to be prepared and repaired because all of us need both. In the 2 Timothy chapter 3, he said in the 16th verse, All Scripture is given for insp by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. What's his desire for you? That you be thoroughly equipped for every good work. How does that happen? Through the Scripture. Amen. 2 Timothy 2, he tells us that we ought to be teaching this message to others that they might teach others also. Teaching it to faithful men. What do we do in church? Identify faithful men so that we can uh, empower them to teach others also. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12, one of the scariest verses in the Bible. He said, you've been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. What's that mean? That means there comes a place where you're supposed to be giving it to somebody else. Amen. He said, instead, you need to, uh, someone to teach you again the basic things about God's Word. You're like babies who need milk instead of solid food. Amen. Talking to Christians, what happened to them? They didn't use what they had. Didn't give, you can't keep something that you won't give away. So if you, you can pile up Bible knowledge between those two holes in the side of your head <laughs> until hell freezes over. And it won't help anybody. And you will reach the place where you begin to think that knowing about stuff means you're doing something. Amen. And that is a deadly place for Christians to get. And yet we have buildings full of them. Amen. Well, he's a real man of the Word. What's that mean? It means he's a parrot. He can quote lots of Scripture. I can tell him he's a man of the Word if I follow him around for a couple of days. Amen. So preparing willing people means getting people ready to be a blessing to somebody else. That's the only reason we're still here. If God had been going to be really kind to us, he'd have, when we got saved, so we was going to make heaven, he'd have killed us right away. Think about that. Jesus looked at, looked at, looked at the disciples and said, in this world, you're going to have trouble. Okay, so get me out. What's your problem? My ticket's punched. Let's go. No, he said, I'm going to leave you here. Chapter 17 of John's Gospel, he prayed for them. He said, don't let the evil one get them and keep them separate from the world just like I'm separate from the world. Separate them through your word. Your word is truth. Amen. And then do the same thing for those who will hear about me through their teaching. He left them here so they could tell somebody else. He left you here so you could tell somebody else. Amen. 
Well, I got one weak amen on that one. Huh? I thought it was so I could get prosperous and drive a better car. Well, I'm all in favor of good cars. Don't misunderstand me. Because without a good car, I can't get where I need to go to tell people that there's a way out of this mess. Now, so preparing willing people to perform whatever it is that God has placed them here to do is the prepare aspect. But the repair aspect of Carter Tizzo means that people are broken. Matthew chapter 1, verse 19, he used the term there where he said, uh, Jesus came on the shores of Galilee, just called one bunch, and then he came to another bunch there uh, and said they'd been out all night fishing and they were mending their nets. The word that he uses there, mending, is the same word he uses for what we're supposed to be doing in church. Mending broken people. They were mending broken nets. We're mending repairing broken people. That's why we're here. Galatians chapter 6 in the first verse. Most of you can quote that, I think. Restore, dear brothers and sisters, if, any, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly, I, I like this translation, this is the New Living, should gently and humbly help that person back into the right path. Amen. Gently and humbly help that person back into the right path. They didn't teach me that in Bible school. Amen. What's my job when somebody fails? Gently and humbly help that person back into the right path. That's our job. And the word that he translated that whole phrase, gently and humbly, restore that person to the right path, all out of that same Greek word, katartizo. The King James says, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Restore. It's the word that you'd use for setting a broken bone. What do you do when you set a broken bone? You put it back in the right relationship to the rest of the body. You don't leave it sticking out through the skin. You pull it out, put it back together so that it's back in the right, in the appropriate relationship. And then you put something on it to hold it there until it heals. That's what we're supposed to be doing for broken people. Not kicking them in the rear, although sometimes that helps. But, but the, <laughs> amen, sometimes a little motivation don't hurt anything. But, but our job is to restore them to that function and place for which God created them. Put them in place and then hold them there. Stand next to them. Support them until healing comes. Amen. Amen. And then Luke chapter 6 and verse 40. Let's turn over there and I'm going to hand this off. He used that same word for repair and prepare. In Luke 6, 40, I think he said it really, really well right here. This is in red letters in my Bible. It means Jesus said it. He said, students are not greater than their teacher, but the student who is fully trained, the word fully trained is our Greek word, katartizo, prepared, repaired, fully trained. Look at somebody say, you need to be fully trained. He said, when the student is fully trained, he will become like his teacher. Who's, he ta who's talking? Jesus. What's the goal? Be like Him. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, and so when we regularly do what Pastor Virgil was just talking about in that place of that celebrating, preparing the willing, allowing ourselves to be prepared, repairing others, repairing ourselves, that process, what happens? Our lives change. Our lives change when we embrace celebrating Him. Our lives begin to change when we allow His Word to prepare us to fulfill that place of our divine destinies. No one can take from me my destiny. Preparing ourselves, right? Then, and in a place of preparing others. And that place of repairing, allowing the blood of Jesus to touch every aspect of of our lives, what happens? Lives change. They're resuscitated. The, 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 the life, the blood, the, the, the breath of God is breathed into us. Things begin to take place and happen. We become resuscitated. But it's not just for us, but then a place of us being able to help and reach others. C-P-R. In the natural, what's it called? Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Right? My people have had a cardiac arrest. 
and a place, and what's the purpose? What do we do with that? And that, that place of compressions begin to be made on the chest where we someone naturally comes alongside and instead of holding the bone in place, catartizo becomes alongside and says, right now, this part isn't working in you. And so I'm going to come alongside and I'm going to be the rhythm. I'm going to be squeezing on that pump to make sure that that life-giving juice on the inside of you Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 says the life is in the blood to make sure that that life giving blood begins to flow particularly to the brain but to every other vital organ in that body so that the body doesn't shut down right so begin to apply that pressure you know and there's a rhythm to that there's a consistency to that when they teach that class, they're going to come and tell us it should be probably about 120 beats per minute. They say between 100 and 120 beats per minute is effective. So what's the adage that they always say? What's the song they tell you to sing? Staying alive, right? Ah, 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 staying alive. Come on, staying alive. Well, you can't tell by the way I walk. <laughs> we won't sing anymore. I'll get in trouble. But... <laughs> But hey, a place is staying alive, right? There's a rhythm. There's a consistency. There's a thing to it. I, I, I like this song personally, Smooth Criminal by Michael Jackson. It's only about a beat minute less. I think it's either 117 or 119, but it's right in there. And I just like the hook in that because it's like, Annie, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? And, you know, it's like, hey, lady, lady, are you okay? Are you okay? Whatever works, but there's a rhythm to it. There's a consistency to it because we have to make sure that that blood continues to flow to every single organ, to every part, especially in the natural, to that place of the, the brain of the individual, right? Now, there's traditional and there's hands-only CPR, right? So in hands-only CPR, the, the big reason, I mean, they, they say that that's actually in many cases much more effective. And you know why? Because usually people don't do the breathing right. They don't get, you know, you got to get the neck tilted so the airway's not constricted, you know, and there's got to be a, 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 you know, oh gosh, I got to kiss this person and I don't know where they've been and I got viral concerns and stuff. So, you know, that mouth to mouth aspect of making sure there's a seal so that when you go, right, and you actually blow, that, that, that the, the breath is actually flowing down all the way. It's not restricted, but it gets into their lungs so that when the pumping resumes, that that oxygen can, can get mixed in with that blood and be flowing through their body. And so sometimes because of that seal doesn't happen, the neck's not tilted right, the oxygen's not able to go in to actually inflate the lungs and give them what they need. They say, well, just pump. At least get the blood going there. At least let's get the blood of Jesus flowing to people. Amen. But this is a spirit-filled church. This is people that are intimate and uh, uh, with the, the presence of God, the Spirit of God, the pneuma, the breath of God. So we can do both. Amen? That's the, uh, that would be the ideal. And so that's why they say if you can have a team, you got two people, this is great. One person can stay right in position so they don't have to necessarily lose a beat. They just stop for a second while those breaths are administ you know, administered because then repositioning, coming up to the head, and then trying to do these breaths that may or may not be effective if we're not actually doing the process. Then i got to get back over here and begin to do the... That's why they say just stay getting the blood flowing. Right? And that's in the natural. That's what happens the way it works in the natural. In both those things, it's the consistency. Are we able to continue to apply, continue to give the, the, make sure that the blood can flow and make sure that then the breath, if we're doing both, that the breath is being, uh, um, is flowing appropriately, not being hindered, not being restrained into that body. Well, the process in the spirit works the same way here at FCF Tucson. It works by circulating the blood of Christ and the Spirit of God into every situation. Amen. The purpose of CPR is about saving and resuscitating life. The purpose of what God told us to do is about saving and resuscitating life. That's why we're here. That's why that celebration aspect is so important. Celebrating. There's a rhythm to that. That's too slow, but you get the point. Right? Right? The blood is important. You know, sometimes in our life, here's what we do, is 
in certain situations, if someone had a gunshot wound or a big thing, they would, you would apply a tourniquet or pressure. Why? Because when the pump heart is pumping, and sometimes even that, that can't, it's pumping really fast, right, because of the adrenaline and all those other things, we don't want them to, pr- blunt, to, to pump that precious life-giving blood out. So what we tie that off so for a short time that that blood doesn't flow to that area. But if you just go and you, you maybe forget stuff, so you tie a string around your pinky finger and you tie it on nice and tight to just stop the circulation for a while and you forget about it. <laughs> you know, I've, oh, that was supposed to remind me of something, but I forgot <laughs> and I forgot to look. And you leave it there for too long, what happens? That life-giving flow of the blood doesn't get to that place. And after a while, you quit, you know, it, you quit feeling it. Right? It doesn't hurt anymore. Sometimes it changes color. Right? You, it completely quits feeling, so someone can just start chomping on it, biting on it, and you don't feel a thing. And after a while, it will fall off. Right? That blood. And there are things that we do in our lives, if we're not careful, or in the lives of the church, that we will begin to clot or put a blockage or tie a tourniquet to not allow the blood of Jesus to flow to every aspect of our life, to flow into every particular place. Maybe there's a a, a hurt that happened in the past that God wants us to be free from that place. But sometimes we tie a tourniquet. We tie a place and we say, Lord Jesus, I'm holding on to this. I'm not going to let go of this. I'm clinging tightly to this offense. I'm clinging tightly to this anger. I'm clinging tightly to this thing. And we're not going to, I'm not allowing Jesus' blood that came to break the shackles that set me free. I'm free, but I'm holding on to the bondage of that area. Not allowing that, that blood, that freedom to flow. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. And the enemy tries to help us to apply, you know, that thing could be unbelief, bad attitudes, pride, thinking, I got this on my own. I don't need Jesus' help in this area. I got this. Strife, unforgiveness, sin. It could be all kinds of things. We want to keep it free and freely flowing in us. Amen? And the Spirit of God. I love in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, after he fashioned man, he formed Adam, what did he do? It says, then he breathed. It didn't have very good effect. But he breathed. <laughs> it's the windscreen, right? But he breathed into him. And it says, and Adam became a life-giving being. The Hebrew in that is awesome. I mean, you want to start teaching about life and, and conception and stuff, go back to that scripture. I mean, it's amazing. We became a life-giving being, the breath of life being breathed in him. And then John chapter 20, verse, verse 22, where it talks about where those disciples, and, and they've encountered Jesus raised from the dead in his resurrected body. And it says, and he breathed them. It said, receive the Holy Spirit. A trans, something new was taking place and happening in them right in that place. He breathed on them. And they became the, the first after, to be born again, right? To be born again. Having their very nature resuscitated. Having their very nature changed to live filled with His divine nature. That's the CPR process. That's why it's important. That's what happens when we celebrate Him. That's what happens when we allow ourselves to be prepared. That's what happens when we allow ourselves to be restored and to be repaired in every area, every aspect. That's why it says over our front door, celebrating God's goodness, preparing the willing, repairing the broken. I like to say it sometimes this, like for me, I'll just say, we celebrate Jesus. That we prepare people and we restore lives we repair brokenness in every kind we as a church this is our strategy and this is our rhythm and this is what happens here and if we 
are, those of us, those of you that have made yourselves, that I'm, I'm committed to this system. I'm going to jump in. Guess what's happened? Life's resuscitated in many areas in your lives and in things. And I always, we, we like to tell uh, people when they, if they first come to the church, say, look, if you'll come and you'll just make a commitment to jump in to the aspects of the things that we've got involved on a regular basis, your life is going to be resuscitated. You're going to sense and know the life of God being pumped through you and being breathed into you. Change is going to take place. This is us, FCF Tucson. This is who we are, and this is what we do. My question for us today is, first of all, am I in the flow? Am I in a place where I'm allowing the blood to reach me? Or am I cutting myself off from certain aspects that his blood would flow to to bring freedom, life, deliverance? Am I cutting myself off in isolation, in relationships, other things? What am I doing? Am I in the flow? Be in the flow. When I come, am I coming to celebrate? Or am I coming because I'm religious and that's what I do? I mean, sometimes we all just come because, oh my gosh, I just, I'm just, I need to get there, right? But that's where we come alongside. And that's where we meet Carmen at the door and Elaine at the door. And they're saying, hey, good morning. God bless you. Here, come on in. Something's going to happen today. The life of God is here. I've been praying this morning. The Spirit of God will be moving in our midst. Are you ready to receive what God has for you? Let's celebrate His goodness. Rejoice in all things, right? Am I experiencing cardiac arrest? Of the Spirit. Come on. Evaluating ourselves and finding those places. Man, where do I, will I let others come and help me? Will I let others come and provide me some chest compression to make sure that His blood is flowing? Will I let others breathe life into me? Will I show up? Will I tune up? Will I join the celebration? That's what we do. That's how we make sure we're in the flow. And then I have to ask this. You, you know, we're, we're going to have CPR certification classes, but am I FCF Tucson CPR certified? What does that mean? It means, hey, how am I growing? Am I growing? If I'm not growing, man, I might need to turn back in my certificate for a bit, not of membership, but my, my CPR certificate. That's why they say it's only good for two years. Why? Because we need to go back through. There's some things that we need to hear again, some things that we need to learn again, some things that we need to be ready for again. New techniques, new strategies, things have maybe shifted and changed, not in doctrine, but in the way that maybe we can apply that in our life. New ideas, right? of how we can become more effective. And that's why they say, hey, we're only going to give this to you for a couple years, then you better come back. Because you might have forgot something. Uh -oh! But you just think, I took that, I've taken that class like five times. I don't need to go again. Ten years later, you're called upon to, uh-oh. How'd that go again? Right? We need to stay up to date, current in the things of the Spirit and in the Word of God. How am I growing? How am I prepared to provide critical care to those who are spiritually dying around me? That's something that we can help and we do here. That how, is the connect, how can I get involved in that? Tuesday night prayer. Come on, from 6 to 6.30. What a great deal. That's helping us to be prepared to, 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 to do these things for ourselves and for others. Our monthly Sunday night prayer, our Impact Tucson outreaches, those outreach things. That's the, part of our emergency response team. Get involved. This is how I become CPR certified, FCFT style. By learning and partnering with others in the jail ministry. Hey, how about just going to FMTI Bible School? 
That's a great way to earn us CPR certification to make sure that His blood and His Spirit, that you're equipped fully, most effectively to help that flow to save the lives of those that need touched. And don't be a bystander. One of the things they're going to tell us in that class is, hey, just because you have this card doesn't mean you have to. You're not required by law to jump in and provide CPR to somebody. You might just freak out, or maybe if they're vomiting and stuff like that, like, ah, you know. But uh, you're not required by law. But guess what, man? There's a, a certain place in us that in the Spirit, we have an obligation. Christ died for me. He died for you. And you have an obligation to get in and do whatever it is that you can. And maybe you might jump in and just for a minute or two, I'm just doing something. I'm really freaking out here. But guess what? Josh is an EMT. And he's much more, hey, Josh, come help me. Woo, okay, woo. But I wasn't going to stand there for five minutes and go run around and try to find Josh in the interim. I'm not going wait to wait for Pastor Virgil to come and minister to the person that needs salvation that's saying to the door, please, somebody tell me how to get saved. We're going to learn how to do it. We're going to be a part of it. And we're going to let them know. Get fit. Get fit yourself. Allow the Spirit of God. Be transparent with yourself and with others. Maybe they've just got the life-given flow you need in that moment. But if we're going to help others, we need to make sure that we're constantly getting repaired. And i got news for you. Sometimes we don't like to be honest with each other and transparent about the things that are really up in our life. But this is Arizona. You drive around, everybody's got a chip on their windshield. And if they don't right now, in two weeks they will. You hear me? Well, the, 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 the windshield of your spiritual life, it's got some chips in it that can be repaired. And if they don't right now, praise the Lord, hallelujah, do some cartwheels or something. But I guess what? In two weeks, in a month, at some point, something is going to come and something is going to against your windshield. And it's going to put a little dent, a crack, a starburst in that thing that's going to need touched. We're not complete and we're not done. Gina's like, I'm glad I didn't sit three seats to the left. <laughs> I wouldn't, I would have moved. I would have done it somewhere else. But we're going to be a part. Where am I or where can I breathe life into others? Where am I breathing life? Where can I? The life of God is in you. Where are you breathing it? Where are you sharing it? Am I participating in part of the process that brings restoration to others? This is our operating system and we will continue. Together, the heartbeat of God, the blood of Christ and His life-giving Spirit will continue to saturate us. will continue to saturate this place. And pressure will build as we come expecting. Pressure will build as we come with the right heart and attitude to be prepared. Pressure will build as we come with the place of transparency, allowing the Spirit of God to touch us in our brokenness so that we can touch others in their brokenness. And as that pressure builds, guess what? The fountain of His healing power is, that is flowing from this place and flow us will increase. Its impact will deepen. The flow will... 2015, He said, turn it up! It'll be turned up even more. That's what we're here to do. Mission possible. Together we can. Guess what? It starts with me. Not me, me, but like point at yourself. It starts with me. It starts with you. Each and every one of us. It starts with me. Let's stand up. We were singing a... Uh, 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 there's power in the name of Jesus. You know, there is an army rising up. Well, guess not. Guess what? We, FCF Tucson, we are an army rising up. We are an army 
rising up. Yeah, we're part of the army, but in this place, in this locality, we are an army. We've been given a mission. And we're rising up to make sure that His life-giving blood, His life-giving Spirit is released in this place in the life of every single one of us, in the life of every single one of you. So that when we leave these walls, that we are continually refreshed, we are continually refilled, and we are continually ready to provide that life-giving flow on the job. That life-giving flow at the grocery store. That life-giving flow in the PTA meeting. Tomorrow night, I got the HOA meeting. I'm on the board on purpose. I can't stand it. But it allows me to touch 88 homeowners around me that I don't get to talk to every day. And in those meetings, you better believe I'm intentional about what I do and about what I say to make sure that people know who I am, what I believe, and most importantly, who He is and wants to be for them. That's who FCF Tucson is. That's what we do. Amen? If you're here today, and, and, and you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus. I don't know quite everybody here intimately, but salvation is the place of start because it's the place where the breath of God is breathed into you and His indwelling Spirit comes. If you've never experienced that and would like to, would you just wave at me right now? I'm just going to take a quick moment. Praise Jesus. Praise God. That means this, that the life of God is in you. When we leave here, Let's be intentional this week thinking about where we're going to share and allow that flow to go. Because we are an army rising up. And FCF Tucson, you are sent. Father, I thank you for these people. I thank you, Lord, for what you've called us to do. I thank you for their commitment to, to, to this place and most importantly to you and to your word. And that together, as a team, that this is what we're doing and this is our strategy. Help us to be real with one another so that the brokenness in every aspect of our lives can be touched even when it needs others to come alongside. Help us to see and recognize brokenness in others and not to make it worse, but to come and support it and bind it so that it can heal. Help us to constantly have our hearts right as we're being prepared to be the people that You've called us to be as we celebrate Your goodness in everything in Jesus' name. Praise God. Don't forget, next week we will receive a special offering for our good friends Eric and Wilma Sonera. So come prepared to be a blessing. Y'all dismissed.